Hello friends, James Stevenson back with another video about Tesla's financial strength. Uh, how do you know whether a company is in good financial health? Are they at risk of going bankrupt? Well, a bad way to find out is to go on Twitter and see if anybody is tweeting that they think the company is going to go bankrupt, because you can find lots of tweets where people accused Tesla of being near bankruptcy and to this day, lots of people still expect Tesla to go bankrupt. So um, one of the best metrics available in the uh, corporate finance world is called Altman Z-Score. Uh, and what Altman Z-Score does is measure the financial strength and health of companies relative to each other. Um, have you ever wanted to calculate your own Altman Z-Score? Of course you have. No, uh, probably you haven't. But good news is you don't have to because I have done the work for you already in a spreadsheet that I will share with you uh, after checking in with Loki. There's Loki uh, dozing in his bed. His ears perked up a little bit when he heard his name, but he says, Dad, please stop talking to me. I'm trying to sleep. Okay, so you can keep an eye on the Loki cam over here while I share my screen with you. So after Tesla earnings came out and the balance sheet looked stronger to me versus last quarter, I decided to go look and see how much the Altman Z-score had changed since last quarter. And I went to my favorite website for that and brought it up. Normally, it'll just tell you what the most current Altman Z-score is. But in this case, all Tesla has published so far is the earnings letter, which is like in a PDF format, right? So these websites you go to to check in on Altman Z-Score, they're still going to show you the old Altman Z-Score calculated based on the numbers that were published in the Q2 earnings release. They won't update to the Q3 numbers until Tesla has filed their 10Q uh, much more detailed report electronically with the SEC. That's where they get the information to update their Z-score. But I'm impatient, and I wanted to know right now what the Altman Z-score is. So the first thing I did was set up a little worksheet, which you're looking at here. This is all the math you need to do to figure out what an Altman Z-score is. So last quarter, Tesla's Altman Z-score was 14.40. All right, uh, how is that uh, being calculated? Well, it is the sum of five different numbers. So there's, uh, the, the numbers are <laughs> named X1, X2, X3, X4, and X5. Thanks, Altman, for naming them that way. So each of these is uh, based on Altman coefficients and financial metrics. So I guess I'll just dive in and start walking you through these. Uh, now these numbers are either a snapshot in time from the balance sheet or they're a 12 trailing month sum. That's what all the numbers are doing. So the first one here is total current assets. This is a balance sheet item. How did I find this item? Well, if you go to Tesla's release, you can see that in Q2, uh, where's my total assets number? Okay, so this is total total assets, and this number is total current assets, 31,222,000,000. It's right here on the balance sheet page of Tesla's release, which was page 24, if you're following along at home. So there's that 31,222,000,000. The next number they want to be able to calculate the first uh, component, X1, is total current liabilities. Where do you find that number? Uh, it's down here, 21,821. What are these numbers doing? They're telling you how much uh, cash, accounts receivable, inventory, prepaid expenses Tesla has. These are the kinds of assets that can be converted to cash within one year. That's why they're categorized as current assets. Likewise, under the liabilities section, stuff like accounts payable, bills outstanding, 
accrued liabilities and other, deferred revenue, customer deposits, current portion of debt and finance leases, those are what make up total current liabilities, which are things that are expected to eat your cash over the next year, right? Uh, and then there are longer term assets and longer term liabilities that are shown below those lines in each section. Okay, so for this metric, we're figuring out what working capital is. What's working capital? It's the difference between your total current assets and your total current liabilities. Meaning, okay, we've got all this stuff we can convert to cash within a year, and we have all these obligations that will need to be paid out of cash over the next year. What's the difference between those two numbers? <laughs> is it positive? Uh, you hope that you have more current assets than you have current liabilities, and in Tesla's case, they do. They have 9,401,000,000 more current assets than current liabilities. So that is how you want your working capital to look. You want it to be a positive number, and the bigger the better. Then what you want to do with that is compare this number against your total assets just to get a size on it. Hey, how big is that? How good is good? Different companies have different size balance sheets. So in this case, you want to look at that number as a percentage of your total assets to see how large that is for this company. And you get a 0 0.14, meaning Tesla's working capital is 14% of total assets. That's pretty good. And Altman says you should multiply that by 1.2, which when you do that gets you 0.16 as the contribution to z-score for x1. Okay. The next thing you need to know, and I'm just double checking that I'm doing the right math to get to this 14.4 that was reported as Tesla's Altman z-score for last quarter. Okay, uh, so far, and I'll uh, add Q3 here in a minute after I've explained uh, what the rest of Altman's z-score is. The next thing you need is retained earnings. Where can I find retained earnings? Well, it's in here someplace. Uh, 5.908 was on last uh, quarter's 10Q. Uh, so... I have to go find it now. Is it staring me right in the face? Uh, where is my retained earnings? Retained earnings, there it is. 5,908,000,000. Okay, so this number was just reported on page four of Tesla's 10Q for June 30th, 2022. That's where I find that number. What's retained earnings? It's what you get when you add up all the losses and all the profits the company has uh, since incorporating. That's the retained earnings. Okay, uh, cumulatively. So that's that number. Then I will run back to the spreadsheet and show you where that number is. And we're going to compare that number against the size of the total assets. Okay, how much are your corporation's total profits lifetime as a percent of your total assets, and in Tesla's case, it's 9%. We're going to multiply that number by 1.4, and that's going to add 0 0.12 to Tesla's Altman z-score in Q2. Okay, next we need the 12 trailing month earnings before tax, EBT. So that number I had to go add up. So earnings before tax is going to be shown on the income statement. Yeah, so you have to take the income before income taxes. And so it's the sum of these four. You take 1882 plus 2635 plus 3626 plus 2474. That's the income before income taxes. And you can see those numbers are right here. And then you need to add back the interest expense to get back to EBIT. EBIT is earnings before interest and taxes. So these numbers, negative 126, 71, 61, 44, those are these numbers right here. So you have to sum these. 
negative numbers, and that gives you this negative 302. You subtract the negative 302, and that adds it to gross it back up for the interest expenses that you don't want to be in your EBIT number. And then you make that number a percentage of your total assets, and that's another 0.16. This uh, coefficient is higher, so this uh, is a better thing. It's worth more points toward your Altman z-score. So that contributes 0 0.53 to Altman z-score. And the next one is a monster. This is where most of Tesla's uh, z-score comes from. It's market capitalization. So this number is just, you can look it up on any stock app, how much is Tesla's current market capitalization. As of the reporting date, uh, that number was $648,534,000,000. And we're going to compare that number against Tesla's total liabilities. Total liabilities are on the balance sheet. Uh, so I'll come back here and show you total liabilities here, $30,855,000,000. So the ratio of those things is 21. Tesla's market capitalization is 21 times its total liabilities. That's good. Why is that good? It's good because if Tesla needed to raise equity to be able to pay off their liabilities, Tesla does not. Tesla does not need to do that. But if they did, they would be able to pay off all of their liabilities with new equity issuance one twentieth of uh, the current shares outstanding. So what am I saying? I'm saying Tesla could issue, you know, 5% more shares than are already outstanding and wipe out all of their liabilities with the cash raised. So that's why this is such a huge number contributing to Tesla's Altman Z-score. Other corporations do not have this advantage. Their market caps are way smaller. Their total liabilities are way bigger. This number is very small for most companies. In Tesla's case, it's huge. And that's a real thing, right? When companies go back to the uh, equity markets to issue more stock, that dilutes existing shareholders. If you would have to issue a ton more stock to pay off your liabilities, uh, that would be bad for your existing shareholders and not great for the financial health of your company. So that's why this is a big number for Tesla. And the last component of Altman Z-score is revenue. Where do I find revenue? Well, this is 12 trailing months, remember. So 67, 166, it may get reported separately, but it is the total of these numbers. So if you add up the four trailing quarters, that's what the Q2 revenue would be, the sum of these four. And you compare that to your total assets. So it's almost a one-to-one -one ratio for Tesla at the moment, and that's going to improve. Tesla's revenue is going to keep growing by about 50% per year uh, going forward for a while. That'll have to slow down eventually, but not very soon. And the Altman coefficient on that is 1, so that contributes 0 0.98 to Tesla's Altman z-score. The sum of these five categories, x1 through x5, is... 14.4. And if I exclude the market cap component of that, it's still 1.79, which is already better than some of Tesla's competitors. What's that mean? That means even if Tesla's stock was currently trading for zero, the company would still have okay uh, financial health even without the ability to issue stock and raise money if, if the stock were worthless. Uh, Altman Z-score would still be 1.8, which, uh, find me another company for which that's true. Uh, probably not very many. Okay, so I'm going to click this plus button here and expand to bring in the Q3 numbers. So as we just saw, total current assets, when you want to uh, update that for Q3, uh, that number's going to be right here next to the other one that we saw before. So there's the 31,222 from Q2. Here's the 35,990 from Q3. So you just plug that number in, 
and you just keep going. Total current liabilities, $24 billion, Um So the working capital for Tesla has improved from $9.4 billion to $11.4 billion. It's up $2 billion. The current assets have grown by $2 billion more than the current liabilities have grown. So that's strengthening uh, financial statement. Total assets are also up. So the ratio of these is up as well from 0.14 to 0.15. So this is adding 0 0.02 more uh, than it was last quarter. And maybe I'll click the plus here to unhide some columns where I've done the sequential increase or decrease for you. So there's that 0 0.02 increase that we just saw. And even though uh, these numbers don't look like they're up by 0 0.02, it's rounding. And what do I mean when I say it's rounding? I mean, if you take this decimal out, this number was 0.137, this number is 0.153, and the difference between those rounds up to 0.02 because it's 0.016. Okay, so that's what I mean when I say it's just a rounding uh, error. Not an actual error, just rounding. Next, we get to retained earnings. How has retained earnings increased by so much, and how did I know? Well, uh, it's because Tesla reported earnings of $3,292,000,000. You're supposed to add that to last quarter's retained earnings to get this quarter's retained earnings. This is not one of the lines that you'll find anywhere in uh, the release that Tesla put out. So if I search for retained, it says zero of zero. That, that word doesn't appear in this statement. But if I go up, uh, where's my earnings? So 3,292 is the number we want. That's this number, net income attributable to common stockholders. 3,292 gets added to the number that was uh, reported in Q2, and that's how you know it's 9.2 billion worth of retained earnings currently. So that number got a lot better. Total assets also got bigger, but this metric got a lot better from 0.09 to 0.12. Uh, even better than it looks, that rounds to 0.04. So this is adding 0.05 uh, to Altman Z-score. So this number got better, this number got better on strengthening balance sheet components. What about 12 trailing months earnings before tax? Well, that number got better too, up to 12 billion, 371 million. The interest expense is lower than it was uh, last quarter. We're uh, bringing in the new quarter's interest expense and dropping the oldest quarter's interest expense. So this is way down, uh, $73 million favorable over the 12 trailing months. So EBIT is up to $12.6 over the 12 trailing months. Compared to the total assets, that number got better. It's up 0 0.01, so that's adding 0 0.03. Now we get to the one that's uh, not up. Uh, very much. So the market capitalization did increase a little uh, versus last quarter's uh, market cap, but the total liabilities are up uh, by a greater percentage than the market cap is up by. So when you do the ratio of this number to that number, now it's 20 instead of 21. So when you multiply it by 0 0.6, it's only worth 11.99 instead of 12.61. So this is a deduction of 0 0.62. Then for the next item, revenue, that's continuing to increase. So that's up to 75 billion almost. And the assets are also up, but not by as much growth. So this metric improved from 0.98 to 1.01, .01, up by 0.03. And so that component comes through as well. What do you get when you add these up? You get a new Altman Z score of 13.92, which is worse than last quarter by 0.49 because of the market capitalization component. But if you exclude the market capitalization component, 
uh, as we did in our first example here. It's risen from 1.79 to 1.92 um, for everything other than market cap, which is just telling you, hey, we're in a bear market right now, and um, Tesla is a high beta stock, so Tesla stock is getting beat up uh, this year. Nothing to do with the uh, financial strength of the company, but it does have something to do with how much money Tesla could get if they went back to the market and raised additional equity. It wouldn't be as much uh, as a percent of total liabilities uh, in Q3 as it was back in Q2. That's what this is telling you. So there is your letdown answer <laughs> to the question, what's Tesla's Altman Z-score? How much better did it get? Well, it actually got a little bit worse uh, despite four out of five balance sheet metrics improving just because the stock price is down some. All right, that is your Altman Z-score video. Let me check back in with Loki. There he is, still snoozing. So with that, I will outro and say, if you've enjoyed today's video, click the like button. And uh, if you're not subscribed to my channel, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. If you're interested in supporting my channel, you can find links in the video description to support me through Patreon or to join my YouTube channel. There's some fun benefits in there if you want to check those out. And I will see you in... Oh, uh, and thank you to my executive producer, Kathy Kishler, and I will see you in the next one.